Our theme for this month is the feelings of Christmas. For our feelings manifest themselves in our attitudes. Our attitudes manifest themselves in our words and actions, keeping in mind that emotions are physical and instinctive. They are part of how we were created by God and meant for good, whereas feelings which play out in our heads are a matter of our choosing, thus they can be transformed. Today, we turn our attention to Mary's feelings that first Christmas, 2,027 years ago. A young peasant girl from Nazareth's feelings of belief stand in stark contrast with that of a priest, a descendant of the first high priest of Israel's feelings of disbelief. This reversal is the first of many in the gospel according to Luke. For reversal is a major theme in Luke's gospel. Humble outsiders receiving a blessing or commendation while prideful insiders suffering rebuke or loss. Humble outsiders opening their hearts to Jesus who came to seek and to save the lost, while prideful, self-righteous insiders rejected him. Yes, through the eyes of her culture, Mary was a young peasant girl from Nazareth, of all places. Yet she found favor with God, and when called upon to participate in the miraculous or the unheard of, she responded faithfully, May it be done according to your word. In so doing, she revealed her true feelings towards God, for she was trusting Him to write the story of her life. Knowing full well, that which He asked of her was grounds to be stoned to death. In the words of C.S. Lewis, you never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death. It is easy to say you believe a rope to be strong as long as you are merely using it to cord a box. But suppose you had to hang by that rope over a precipice. Such was the case with Mary. Her belief had become a matter of life or death. With that in mind, let us consider our text for today, Luke 1, 26-50. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who is called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now at this time Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul exalts 
the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation towards those who fear him. The first two verses of our text for today, verses 26 to 27, speak to the context of the episode, the situation at hand as well as to the contrast, the location, cultural role, and feelings. In verses 26 to 27, the author Luke links this narrative with the previous one regarding Zacharias and Elizabeth. Verse 24 tells us, Elizabeth was in seclusion for five months after she became pregnant. In the sixth month of her pregnancy, the same angel who visited Zacharias in the temple, Gabriel, was now being sent by God to Nazareth to speak to Mary. In other words, in scene one, the angel's in Jerusalem speaking to the priest Zacharias. In scene two, the angels in Nazareth speaking to lowly Mary. Jerusalem, the city of David, the hub of the Jewish culture where the temple is located, stands in stark contrast with Nazareth, a town of roughly 200 people, which is an hour's walk from the district capital of Old Galilee. In verse 27, we find out that Mary is engaged to a man named Joseph, who is a descendant of King David. Culturally, that means a legally binding contract had been signed. Thus, they were legally married. But they have not consummated the marriage because the stipulations in the contract had not yet been met. Such as Mary reaching a specified age, or suppose Joseph hadn't come up with the specified money. Such is the situation at hand in verse 28, when Gabriel comes in and greets Mary with these words, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. In verse 29, Mary's initial reaction or feelings were in keeping with her humble station in life as a teenager, poor, and a female in a patriarchal or male-controlled society. Even though perplexed or confused by his greeting, she did not question or challenge the angel, but pondered or considered this. Then in verse 30, the angel, knowing fear would be the immediate response for any being created with instinctive emotions, tried to reassure Mary by speaking to anticipated fear and telling her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Then in verses 31 to 32, the angel proceeds to tell her that she will conceive and bear the Son of God. He speaks of a biological miracle she was going to be a part of. That is, she was going to conceive without being with a man. That certainly would have sparked feelings of curiosity in me. How about you? Apparently it did so in Mary as well, for she found her voice and asked, How can this be, since I am a virgin? Unlike Zacharias' question in Luke 1.18, which revealed feelings of doubt and disbelief, Mary's question revealed feelings of curiosity. Zachariah's feelings were of disbelief, for he had not let his faith inform his feelings. As a priest, there is little likelihood that he would not have been taught the story of Abraham and Sarah from the Torah, the Hebrew Bible. As such, he displayed an attitude of disbelief when he asked, How will I know this for certain? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. On the other hand, Mary's question revealed her curiosity. How will the promised event transpire biologically? Nothing in her faith ever prepared her for conception without having been with a man. The angel responded accordingly. That is, Zachariah's question, which revealed feelings of disbelief, yielded an inability to speak until after the baby was born and circumcised. Mary's question, which revealed curiosity, yielded an explanation. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And more importantly, even though without a doubt, 
Mary still didn't fully understand the angel's explanation regarding this biological miracle. And even though she would have to bear the burden of the shame for what appeared to be adultery and possibly of being stoned to death based on the Jewish laws of morality recorded in Deuteronomy 22, 20 to 24, she responded with belief and faithfulness for she responded, behold, the bond slave or female slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. How about you? When God asks you to step outside your comfort zone, what kind of feelings ensue and how do you respond? Mary was certainly being asked to step outside her comfort zone. The significance of the event the angel described in response to Mary's question, that is, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason, the Holy Child should be called the Son of God, should not be minimized. It indicates not merely that Jesus was God's Son through the Holy Spirit, but that Jesus was a unique person who was a product of both the divine and the human in manner, unlike any before or since. In addition, theologically, the doctrine of virgin conception stresses that Jesus was fully human, participating in the whole human life cycle from womb to tomb. But most significantly, the event conveys the fact that Jesus is a miraculous gift to humanity, not initially the product of any normal human activity or process. He is a gift that comes ultimately from God, but comes through Mary in a way that allows one to say that Jesus' origins are both human and divine. The significance of Mary's response should not be minimized either. For she was asked to participate in the miraculous, way outside her comfort zone, way outside her knowledge base, way outside her experience or that of her family, her culture, or the world for that matter. Yet she responded, may it be done to me. That is how much faith she had in God. Was she fearful? We don't know. The likelihood is pretty great, but then by faith, she might have recognized that what God ordains, he sustains. In uh, in either case, she stepped out in faith and let God write her story. How about you? Are you stepping out in faith and letting God write your story? The consequence of her faith was that she gave birth to the Son of God. In the words of Max Lucado, She looked into the face of the baby, her son, her Lord, his majesty. And at that point in history, the human being who had best understood who God is, what he was doing was a teenage girl in a smelly stable. She can't take her eyes off of him. Somehow Mary knows she is holding God. So this is he. She remembers the words of the angel. His kingdom will never end. He looks like anything but a king. His face is prunish and red. His cry, though strong and healthy, is still the helpless and piercing cry of a baby. He is absolutely dependent upon her for his well-being. Majesty in the midst of the mundane. Holiness in the filth of sheep manure and sweat. Divinity entering the world on the floor of a stable through the womb of a teenager in the presence of a carpenter. She touches the face of the infant God. The priest Zachariah responded with disbelief when Gabriel delivered the good news personally that God was going to answer his prayers for a child. The Virgin Mary responded with belief when Gabriel delivered the good news that miraculously Mary would conceive and give birth to the Son of God. All four played a part in God's plan to redeem the world he loves. That is, Zechariah fathered John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus. Mary gave birth to Jesus, who provided the way for us to be reconciled to our Heavenly Father. As disciples of Christ, we too have a part to play in God's plan to redeem the world He loves. That is, to go and make disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them all that Jesus commanded His original disciples. But to fulfill our role like Mary, we must be willing by faith to step outside our comfort zone and trust God. 
And someday we too might be able to touch the face of God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, please empower us that we are willing to faithfully step out of our comfort zone, fulfill the role Jesus has assigned us to play in God's plan to redeem the world he loves. Holy Spirit, please guide us and direct our steps such that both in our words and our actions we bring glory to God. And Holy Spirit, please give us the faith to allow God to write the story of our lives like he did Mary's. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. May you have a blessed week, and hopefully you can join us again for the next part of our sermon series on Feelings of Christmas, which will be available starting next Sunday, next Sunday morning, when God calls you home. May Jesus greet you with, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you.